Hey everyone, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. I'm just going to do a quick review of Belisario shirts. Just received a first order of Belisario made to measure shirt in the mail today and I'm eager to put it on as you can see and we'll talk about it and do a review and a walkthrough of their ordering process. So I first became familiar with Belisario, an Italian made to measure tailoring company from a, an Instagram post by Peter Zottolo, also known as Urban Composition. And Peter was wearing a mid-blue or kind of a bright sky blue linen shirt with a one-piece collar from Belisario. And it really stood out to me. I've been a fan of the one-piece collar recently because my face is on the wider side. And if I wear a spread collar, it can possibly make my face look wider. So the ideal collar for me is sort of one that is more narrow, which counteracts the wider nature of my face. And that means button-down collars, it can mean um, long point collars, but I really like the one-piece collar uh, because it gives you more of a uh, relaxed vacation-y vibe, uh, a little bit of a rakish look if you want to use that term. And uh, so I've been preferring those, especially for summer. Since I've not been wearing a tie, and haven't been interested in wearing a tie recently, uh, the, for me, the shirt collar really has to do the job of the tie then to make your outfit look interesting. Both the shirt and the collar have to do some of that heavy lifting that would otherwise be done sartorially by a necktie. And so the one-piece collar does that again because it has a really nice collar roll and it gives you a nice V-shape here. Um, so I, I wanted to try the one-piece collars. Not too many places make them or do them really well. I have a separate video on this coming up. And uh, Belisario did offer that, so I wanted to give them a shot. Unlike Fralbo or uh, Cordone, which have relationships with web-based sellers like uh, The Rake, Belisario doesn't seem to have as wide a profile outside of Italy. It's not well known in the online menswear world, as far as I can tell. I didn't see other reviews or, or that many mentions of it, other than Peter's Instagram post. When I went to the site and clicked on Create Your Shirt, I did find they had a large selection of fabrics, um, which were enticing. Right? They have under a category of white shirts, for example, um, a tremendous range of items. Uh, for instance, Oxford's um, cotton linen mixes in various percentages of the two fabrics. They have a seersucker. They have twills, and then they also have um, Giro Inglese for summer and various weights. These are the mesh-like fabrics for warm weather wear. And um, also even the um, higher thread count items or the luxury cottons like Poplin White Sea Island. High-end materials, you can tell by the price. And then the super fine 300 thread count Egyptian cottons, uh, the Giza 45s which in shirting are considered the finest of shirts. So they did have um, an ample range of options there, which was great. Um, outside of that, they have um, linens, jersey, and um, denim, so other fabrics, all types of shirting fabrics, shirting materials that you can think of in a good range within each. So I selected linen. So looking for a summer shirt, and the second one here was the one I was interested in. It's in the right color and stripe size. And for each of the fabrics, you can just pop it open and blow it up and get some details about it at the bottom, as well as look at the fabric more closely. Once you select the fabric, you then have the option of collars. And again, there's a wide range of English collars, French collars, Italian collars, various button downs. I was looking for a one piece. Uh, the shawl collar that they have here called the Capri is a one piece, but it has visible buttons, which I'm not a fan of. So I've selected instead uh, the Ischia collar, which has no buttons. So if you select that, it's a bit of a upcharge, only three euros though, so not considerable. Uh, some of the other customization options do add more to the price, but it's usually the case and it's something to be expected. After the collars, you have cuff options, um, rounded, two-button, French cuffs, and so forth. And we'll just select the normal rounded cuff. 
you can select how the front looks, whether you have a placket or no placket. And it shows the no placket option in the back as well. You can have a smooth back or um, various pleating choices. Onto the personalization, you can have darts put on the back or the front and pockets. For those who like non-fused collars, which have no interlining or uh, cuffs without fusing, you can select those too and the price changes. Uh, there is no price change, the same cost. You can even order spare collars and cuffs for some of the fits. It doesn't work for one piece collars because it's made from the same fabric as the, or the same piece as the body of the shirt. But if you choose other collars which are separately sewn on and cuffs, you can get extras for replacement purposes. And then you can also um, uh, choose better options for buttons. I assume that the normal options must be plastic or something like that. You can select mother of pearl, either dark or light, black or white, and in different thicknesses. So one thing I noticed about Italian shirt makers is that they sometimes prefer these really thick buttons, three and a half millimeters. I find them to be awkward to handle in terms of buttoning and unbuttoning. I prefer the thinner button, so I was able to select that a two and a half millimeter thickness, uh, which is easier for your hands, uh, your fingers to handle, at least in my case. And some other choices, contrast cuffs, smaller shirt collars, horizontal buttonholes, and so forth. And then for those who like handmade detailing, um, similar to what you get from bespoke work, or I guess this would be bespoke, you can choose various things to be done by hand, whether the collar, uh, the buttonholes, the cuffs, the armholes, and so, forth, so on. And you can also get embroidery on there, um, monogram, or little details on the cuffs of the shirt, if that's uh, something that you're interested in. Personally, don't mind machine work overall, especially because I wear it under a jacket. So, uh, but that, if that's something that interests you, well, sorry, has it. And then lastly, you can select the fit, either the standard fit, which would be, uh, you know, 15, 15 and a half, 16, and so on, in American sizing, or 38, 39, 40 in EU sizing. I chose the made to measure option, which enabled me to provide exact measurements from an existing custom shirt that I had that fit me well. And you can measure yourself again on the body, or you can use a shirt. And it allows a filling in either centimeters or inches. Along with that, they provide an explanation of how to measure in each case. Uh, there's an image and some explanation of where to do the measurements. Some of these are not entirely clear, but most of them are. And as I will say, as I will discuss shortly, uh, the main consideration for me was the length of the arms, or the sleeve length, which would be right sleeve and left sleeve. One of my arms is a little bit longer than the other, or seems to be when I get shirts. And so uh, that was a great choice. Uh, the, the possibility of customizing that was uh, ideal. So this is the finished shirt. And I know it can be difficult or challenging to see the fit in a video or on a, in a photo. But I think you can gauge that this fits pretty well. Um, and it is made from the custom sizes that I provided due to um, a shirt, from, based on a shirt that I already own. And um, the sides are slim, yet there's still leeway here, so a bit of play on the sides. Likewise, the chest and the waist have some breathing room, so that if I sit down, there won't be gapping at the placket or where the buttons are, and there won't be that sort of accordion folding uh, if I sit down and get up. The length is right as well for being tucked in, and a key thing with linen shirts and shirts in general for me would be sleeve length. Um, I find that if I order standard sizes from Italian shirt makers, like a 38 or 39 or a 40, the sleeves tend to be too short for my jackets or even for wear without a jacket. Uh, the reason being that uh, Italian jackets, especially Neapolitan ones, tend to have shorter sleeves. And so the shirt sleeves accordingly need to be shorter so that only a little bit of them peak, uh, a little bit peaks below the jacket sleeve. Given that my jackets are average length, I've found that I had problems in showing the right amount of cuff below, below the jacket sleeve. So being able to customize that measurement is always a key consideration for me when I purchase a shirt.
So let's take a look at the shirt to see what it looks like under a jacket, and I'll bring up a couple more things related to it. So this is what the jacket looks like below a sport coat. And the first thing I want to show you about this is the sleeve length. So as I said earlier in the video, one of my arms tends to look longer than the other, and that usually shows up in the cuffs appearing uneven. Here they appear to be quite even, I think you can see that, showing about a half inch or a quarter inch below the shirt, uh, below the jacket cuff. And that's exactly the right length, and it's the reason why I would do a made-to-measure shirt to accommodate for those physical aspects that are not captured in a standard made to uh, standard ready-to-wear off-the-rack shirt. Um, another thing I look for beyond the sleeve length is the placement of the collar, and I want to ensure not only that the collar has a nice collar roll, but that it will stay under the lapels of the jacket. The worst thing that could happen during the day is that the collar comes out like this. And um, some people like to wear camp collars that way, uh, but I prefer to keep them tucked in. And usually I would get a hidden button below the collar points to help ensure that is the case. I don't want to have a visible button though, so I was kind of concerned that the Belisario collar, which doesn't have a button, would kind of bleed out over the lapels. However, I find that it's shaped in such a way that it maintains that collar roll but it doesn't look like it will pop out over the lapels. It has kind of a narrow uh, and a narrow shape to it, and the folds or the roll of the collar uh, looks like it'll be staying under the lapel. Besides that, I want to make sure that this button, the, the first button down, is in the right spot. I don't want this to be too deep or too far down the shirt. don't want my chest to be open and exposed to the world. I don't want this V formed by the one-piece collar to spread open. Uh, I am a professor, I'm a university administrator, so even in the summer if I dress this way and I appear somewhat relaxed, I don't want to look like disco stew, where you would recommend I wear a gold necklace as an accessory. Right? It's not the appearance, it's not the style I'm going for, so I'm happy that this is placed in exactly the right spot in terms of keeping the shirt closed. Along those lines, uh, Belisario also developed a horizontal buttonhole for this top button, which is something that they promote in their materials as being unique to them. I wasn't aware of it, and when I ordered the item and put on the shirt for the first time, I noticed that when I fastened this button, it felt a little bit different than how I would normally feel buttoning a um, regular shirt. So most, button sh uh, most buttonholes on shirts are vertically aligned or vertically oriented, meaning that they are taller than they are wide. And you don't really think about that, but when you put on a shirt, uh, you simply button, the, button them up like that. Uh, however, because they're easy to put on with a vertical buttonhole, they're also, it's also easy for them to pop free, especially with a linen shirt. Linen being kind of a stiff fabric, uh, it tends to exert pressure against the button. Uh, the, the piece of fabric where the buttonhole is exerts pressure against the button and can pop open during the day. And I found this to be the case with some of the other linen shirts that I wear. So being proactive and based on studying how men wear their shirts over the years, Belisario had come up with a, a sort of patented horizontal top button system. And what that means is this button is simply oriented this way as opposed to that way. If you find a horizontal button anywhere on the shirt, it'll usually be the bottom button. And that's also designed to keep the shirt around your hips and not uh, allow it to open up and uh, sort of pop out. By putting it up here, they achieve the same effect. This will not pop open during the day as I walk around, do my business, get up and down, do normal activities. And I really appreciate that. It's not something you need to pay for either. Uh, it's something that the Belisario has uh, thought about based on their observations and it's something that they then uh, include in their shirting to ensure that their customers look the best they can wearing their shirts. So I appreciate that aspect of the company. And I think that's about it in terms of the coverage of the shirt. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to add comments. Like the video and subscribe to us at Gentleman Scholars Club for more brand reviews, style advice, and discussion of classic menswear. Thanks for watching.